Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Futures Command, Lieutenant General Ross Kaufman. Welcome to the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, Change of Command, and Change of Responsibility Ceremony, where Brigadier General Edward H. Bailey, Commanding General, will relinquish command to Major General Paula C. Lodi, and Command Sergeant Major Kyle S. Brunell will relinquish responsibility to Command Sergeant Major Michael D. Dills II. At this time, we would like to welcome family members of the official party and distinguished guests joining us for today's ceremony. Major General Lodi's spouse, Command Sergeant Major Henry Vance, United States Army, retired. Major General Lodi's sister, Lieutenant General Maria Barrett, and her spouse, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Barrett, United States Army, retired. Command Sergeant Major Brunell's spouse, Mrs. Stephanie Brunell, and their daughter, Caitlin. Command Sergeant Major Dill's spouse, Mrs. Rebecca Dills, and their sons, Jace and Luke. Command Sergeant Major Dill's mother-in-law, Mrs. Sharon Anderson. In attendance are the following distinguished guests. The United States Army Surgeon General and Commanding General, United States Army Medical Command, Lieutenant General Mary Isagire and Mr. Isagire. Lieutenant General William Troy, United States Army, retired, and his wife, Paula. National Guard Bureau Surgeon General, Major General Jill Ferris. Major General Richard Thomas, United States Army retired, and Mrs. Jeanette Thomas. Representing Congressman David Trone, Ms. Adina Bradford. Assistant Surgeon General for Mobilization Readiness and Army Reserve Affairs Office, the Surgeon General and Deputy Commander, Army Reserve Medical Command, Brigadier General Thad Collard. The Commanding General, Medical Readiness Command East, and Director Defense Health Network East, Brigadier General Lance Rainey. Ms. Dawn Rosarios, Senior Executive Service, retired, and her spouse, Mr. Jack Rosarios. Frederick County Council President, Mr. Brad Young. Acting Assistant Director, Support Component, Acquisition Executive, Ms. Kathy Burst. Defense Health Agency Senior Enlisted Leader, Chief Master Sergeant, Tanya Johnson. Senior Enlisted Leader to the Assistant Director Support Component Acquisi Acquisition Executive, Master Chief Petty Officer Joseph Rawson. We would also like to welcome all directors, senior staff, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, and colleagues. Thank you all for joining us on this special occasion. At this time, please direct your attention to the front row of the audience as we honor the families of the outgoing and incoming command teams. Representing the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command's best medic team are Staff Sergeant Rodrigo Flores and Sergeant Juan Garcia. On behalf of Command Sergeant Major Brunel, Sergeant Flores will now present Mrs. Stephanie Brunel with the bouquet of red roses as a token of gratitude for their service rendered to the United States Army, the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, and the Fort Detrick community. Sergeant Flores will also present Command Sergeant Major Brunel's daughter, Caitlin, with a single rose for her support throughout his command. On behalf of Command Sergeant Major Dills, Sergeant Garcia will now present Mrs. Rebecca Dills and mother-in-law Sharon with the bouquet of yellow roses, signifying a new beginning and welcome to the organization. Sergeant Garcia will also present his sons, Jace and Luke, with a small token of appreciation. <laughs> On behalf of Command Sergeant Major Dills, excuse me. In 1958, the Army renamed its Medical Research Board as the U.S. Army Medical Research and Development Command. Tasked with serving as the central agency for all Army military medical research and development to improve preventive medicine measures and rapid treatment techniques. In 1994, the Army renamed USA MRDC as the Medical Research and Materiel Command with a new motto, Protect, Project, Sustain. This reorganization improved the Army Medical Department's ability to prevent illness and injury in deployed forces by equipping the Army's medics to provide the best possible combat casualty care and to ensure medical logistics systems that enhance medical readiness. In 2019, USA MRMC was redesignated as the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, tasked with responsibly and responsibly creating, developing, acquiring, and delivering capabilities for the warfighter. Today, 
USA MRDC works hand in hand with its partners around the world to defeat threats to the health of warfighters and others through cutting edge medical research and development. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by the 21st Signal Brigade's chaplain, Chaplain Major James Brown. Good morning. Please pray with me according to your own faith or tradition. Lord God, you are the eternal God who knows our rising, our laying down, our comings and our goings. Today, Lord, we celebrate and commemorate leadership as it's passed from one team to another. Leadership is tough and it carries a great weight. And sometimes it can feel lonely. So Lord, we thank you, for General Bailey and Command Sergeant Major Brunel as they pass that mantle of leadership. Thank you for their wisdom, their leadership, their guidance as they stewarded those placed under their care. Watch over them, Lord, as they go on to the next thing and give them a sense of pride, knowing that you sustain them every step of the way. Lord, we ask that you would grant General Lodi and Sergeant Major Dills wisdom, creativity, and understanding as they place the needs of the nation ahead of their own. Lord, we're reminded today that no one serves alone and we thank you for the family that are around us and those standing in the wings waiting. Bless them, keep them, cause your face to shine down on them and give them peace, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the arrival of the official party, rendering of honors and singing of the national anthem by Sergeant Lauren Pesha. Lieutenant General Kaufman has deferred honors to Brigadier General Bailey as he departs command. broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red flare the bombs bursting in that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Lieutenant General Kaufman will oversee passing of the colors from outgoing command team, Brigadier General Bailey and Command Sergeant Major Brunel to the incoming command team, Major General Lodi and Command Sergeant Major Dills, symbolizing the change of command and responsibility. The passing of colors symbolizes the transfer of command authority and responsibility from Brigadier General Bailey to Major General Lodi. The passing of the command colors from Command Sergeant Major Brunel to Brigadier General Bailey signifies the key role of the non-commissioned officer corps as the guardian and protector of the colors and symbolizes his last act as the senior enlisted advisor of this organization. 
The passing of colors from Brigadier General Bailey to Lieutenant General Kaufman signifies the relinquishment of command and heartfelt gratitude for the support, guidance, and the opportunity to serve. The passing of colors from Lieutenant General Kaufman to Major General Lodi represents the trust and confidence in her leadership and commitment to care for the organization. Finally, the passing of colors from Major General Lodi to Command Sergeant Major Dills signifies her first act in command and verifies the trust she places in him as her new senior enlisted advisor and protector of the colors. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command effective 10 July, 2024. Signed, Paula C. Lodi, Major General, United States Army, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Kaufman. Well, welcome everyone. I always find it a little uncomfortable that after the national anthem ends, it's just dead silent. Can we have a round of applause for that great singer? Well, distinguished guests, colleagues, fellow general officers, SESs, Mary, good to see you. The, uh, I just think this is a wonderful, wonderful day. You know, the, the Kaufmans have never in their lives been under civilian medical care. And it's all started right here. As we look to the past, the medical care that we've received began in this place and others within this organization. And I think we turned out okay. Right. I mean, this is uh, just absolutely wonderful medical care from when my father was in, her father was in, Jackie was in, myself, our kids. It's just been constant. And we owe a huge debt of gratitude to everyone in the audience and everyone you represent. You know, I, I have never felt more safe or confident than I do right now, because no matter what happens to me, if someone screams medic, y'all are going to get on me like a hobo on a ham sandwich. <laughs> and uh, I know there's nothing that can happen. There's no better or safer place to be. And, uh, you know, Ned's retiring. And uh, Ned, so am I. And I just want to kind of relay a story that, you know, only been behind our closed doors in our family. But uh, about two months ago, I felt like I had more to give. And I went home and I told Jack, I said, you know, I think I'm going to pull those retirement packets. Uh, I, I think I want to give a couple more years. And she said, uh, what, what the hell are you talking about? No. <laughs> no, that's not how this works. I said, no, I've been through this whole medical piece and I, I'm kind of feeling like I have superpowers. She said, what, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you know, I've always wanted to be an Avenger. Uh, or, you know, one of the superheroes from the 80s, 70s, like the Bionic Man. I did, I've always wanted to do that, be some kind of superhero. And now that I've gone through the medical community and the Army and as part of my retirement process, I think I'm starting to develop superpowers. And she said, well, like what? I said, I think I have bionic hearing. She goes, those are called hearing aids. I said, no, 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 it's like a superpower. And I said, and I can breathe underwater. She goes, that's a CPAP. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. She said, listen, I, I can guarantee you're going to have one superpower if you don't keep your retirement in there. And she goes, I, I go, what? And she goes, you're going to learn how to fly, boy. <laughs> and so, Ned, as you're going through this whole retirement process, I'm right there with you. And I know that you got a lot to give. And uh, you'll give that outside of the Army and what you've given inside of the Army. 
has absolutely mattered. And this organization is so special. You know, uh, Jill, where are you? Jill, make it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jill, rep Jill represents the total army here today, right? And MRDC supports the total army and the joint force and supports really the entire world because they, you all, you seek out cutting edge technologies. You put money towards those, you continue to mature them and mature them until they're ready. And once the army rolls them out, then the civilian community can then pull those out and really scale them across the nation and the world. So the work that's done here with industry partners and in-house is changing the world. And that's this command. You know, it's probably one of the very few research and development commands or entities in the world that focuses on healthy people and what calamities and catastrophes could happen to them and how do we prevent that or reduce the effects. Every other reason, you know, there's medical research all over the world, but they're, they're focused on very specific, you know, sicknesses or illnesses or diseases or medications, but you're focused on our women and men, our healthy women and men that will go into combat and need assistance when the when someone for real yells medic. And so I am just so proud to be here with you. You know, I stole this off your web page shamelessly, but I thought it was so well written and I did truncate it somewhat. But uh, focus on performance and treatment, care to protect, treat and optimize the health and performance of our women and men. And if that's not the most noble mission statement you've ever heard, we can't be friends because that's taking care of our most important asset, our soldiers. And that's what MRDC does. But what has it done under General Bailey and Sergeant Major Brunel? Well, first of all, I'm a little PO'd at you, okay? Because I went through this whole list of accomplishments and nowhere in there is male pattern baldness. And this is BS, okay? Like we've got, we got money, we got people, we got we coordination, and you know, I'm not seeing any of it, but we'll get into it. So apparently things like this beat that, Ned. Okay, you got the FDA to clear an artificial intelligence powered triage system for assessing uh, hemorrhage risk and your whole blood test to get after the TBI problem. Okay, yeah, that, that one that one way outweighs it. Okay, so we'll say that was absolutely a, a good choice. Training simulations for our medics to get better. Uh, anesthesia machine for our working animals. We could have got mange in there. Like, you know, it's, we're working on the working animals. You got anesthesia, but then maybe it could also treat mange. We could do, do some human tests. We went to Project Convergence in Arctic Eagle or Arctic Edge and put our medical equipment through the most arduous conditions known in the cold and the heat. And uh, so I give you that one. Blast and overpressure, hearing loss prevention, Dragon Medic, which uh, tracks and identifies bio threats. You know, even one of our orthopods came up with a fast cast, which is just a spray cast that comes on and you all really promoted that and put money behind it. So it's amazing. Um, and then applied solutions to burn research. Um, so I, I guess in the end of the day, male pattern baldness doesn't top any of those, but in just a couple dollars, just a couple dollars. And Paula, you know, you, you, you feeling me? Yeah. You know, if Henry was bald, right? <laughs> Here, this would be a, this would be a thing, right? But no. So, um, but anyway, Ned, to Catherine, Emily, and Elizabeth can't be here today. And to you, thank you for your service to this nation and for making us better. Okay. You are, since you, since you signed up as an infantryman till today, you have had one purpose in mind and that's serve your nation and serve our people. And uh, so from 
the Chief Staff of the Army, from General Rainey, from myself, thank you so much. Uh, Sergeant Major Brunel, Stephanie and Katie are here. Um, Katie, I have a Katie, okay? And uh, I was just thinking that there's no more fun than embarrassing a Katie. And I used to do things like this. I would, whenever we were in a mall or in the commissary, I'd just scream out, I am Katie Kaufman's father at the top of my lungs. And she would just drop to the floor in embarrassment. So I, I just thought we'd continue that tradition today, Katie. And uh, good luck in Germany. I know that you're going back home and uh, it's just gonna be wonderful. And uh, we thank you for your service and what you've done here. And I know you'll continue to do that in the future. Okay. So Paula and Kamar and Sergeant Major Dills. Okay, this is huge. Right? I mean, it's it's like the first day of school. You get that. You know, it's like, all right, I can't wait to get in there. And uh, I know there's going to be homework, but uh, the people are going to make it worth it. And uh, Henry, I know that the girls can't be here today, but thank you for being here, and thank you for always supporting your spouse. And uh, it, it's just a magical thing uh, that that we have families and children that allow us to do this and all of uh, we sure glad that they do because that means that we, they get to share you with us. So thank you. And Rebecca, Jason, Luke, trying to, where are we? Oh, there we go. Here's Jason, Luke. Uh, welcome really to the team. It's, uh, it's not a far move for you. I think you just had to like point in another direction. And uh, you know, Sharon, you represent all the parents that aren't here, that instilled the, the values and the really the ideals in all of us so that we can serve our country. And you here supporting your son-in-law means the world to us, so thank you for being um, You know, General Rainey wanted me to pass on to both you as well as Sergeant Major Hester. That we're really, really glad that you're joining us. And we're honored that the selection uh, by Army Senior Leadership to bring you here. So thank you very much, and we're so excited. Paula brings a wealth of experience, and I've witnessed it firsthand in combat. We shared a base camp just south of Mosul together. Uh, we were both battalion commanders, and uh, she's calm under pressure. And really, I'm talking to the crowd at this point. This is who you're, you're getting as your new commander. Calm under pressure, smart, focused, willing to make decisions, believes in her people, and she deflects all praise to others. She is focused on the team more than herself, the mission more than herself, and that's who you're getting. It was with your new command sergeant major, you're getting a trainer. And that used to be a compliment in our army. He's a great trainer, and you never hear that anymore. But you are a great trainer. You grew up on the Cobra team, best in the desert, and you know, couple times at the National Training Center, and you have a reputation of someone who's always focused on making others better. So that's who you're getting in your new command sergeant major. Um, and the other thing I'd say about your command sergeant major is this. He came in as, just like Ned, he came in as an infantryman, and he re-enlisted to be a medic. So he chose twice. He chose to be in the Army, and then he chose to be part of this community. And that is a microcosm of the American dream, because in the Army, anything is possible, and you, have, you can choose your own path to success. And so from that first day in the Army till now, as a, a two-star Command Sergeant Major Select, that's pretty cool. So welcome. The uh, last thing I'd like to say is command's a gift. And... Those of us that get to command are the lucky, luckiest humans on earth. I believe it because you're surrounded by just incredible soldiers and leaders. And the only thing that I encourage you to remember is you're one day closer to it being over. So make every day count. Thank you all. Thank you, Lieutenant General Kaufman. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commander of the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, Brigadier General Bailey.
General Kaufman, thank you for those great words. Very, very inspiring, and I appreciate the conversation in the back as well. Um, I will work on our shared problem when I when I get out. Okay. So, uh, other senior leaders and distinguished guests, and, and really the members of the community, thank you very much for being here. Uh, MRDC is really all about shared experiences and people coming together to solve very large problems, as General Kaufman was talking about. What we do on behalf of the Army is really on behalf of the Joint Force and the world at large. Uh, and so I appreciate all of you who are here. Um, special thank you to Sergeant Pechev. Thank you for the national anthem and for the folks who uh, set up for the ceremony. I'd like to thank the City of Frederick Mayor Michael O'Connor and uh, Maryland Senator Karen Lewis Young, uh, as well as our county representatives, and then also the representative from, um, excuse me, Congressman Trone's office. Thank you for being here as well. So appreciate that. Um, folks from the business community and also representatives from our local uh, academic institutions. It's due to these relationships in the community that MRDC and Fort Detrick can accomplish our mission and really appreciate the collaboration that we have with the local community. You know, for decades, Fort Detrick has uh, been an installation here that's helped shape industry and education. And then nationally, we've really helped shape public health and medicine, as uh, General Coffin was referring to. So we're a national asset, but we're committed to leading the community through innovation and business development as well. And a lot of what goes on on the 270 quarter uh, has come out of here with a lot of kernels who probably work for those companies now. But that's another topic. Um, to the Fort Detrick Garrison team, uh, Ned Marsh and Command Sergeant Major Dills is moving up. Thank you. You guys just run a phenomenal, phenomenal team. Day one, we were in a Scooby bus driving around getting a little windshield tour. And uh, one of the power lines arced to the ground, started a fire. Ned Marsh just picks up the fire extinguisher, walks out, puts it out, and we get back on the bus and keep going. I knew I had a great garrison commander uh, when that happened, right? And it's been like that every day. Um, you know, if you, if you do the senior commander course, talk to General Jones, the uh, IMCOM commander, he'll tell you senior commanders can be up to 40% of somebody's job. Um, if you don't talk about UCMJ, I would say garrison is less than 10% because Ned and our major deals are just such a fantastic team. So really thank you for all that support. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, the installation opens its gates daily. We have about 11,000 people come pouring onto the installation. The majority of those are not in the Department of Defense. We host five cabinet level agencies. Uh, and then we also have every service and every comp represented on the installation. One of the pleasures of being in command here was I got to re-enlist the United States Marine. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Little six, you know, miles in circumference and you get all that packed into here. And I really love doing it. Um, the, the other thing is that, you know, we work in this consortium comprised of eight federal research agencies and collaborate on, S on efforts really to enhance uh, health overall. So whether it's National Cancer Institute, NIH, NIAID, uh, and other agencies, there's collaborative science going on. Um, and that's really fundamental because it's what we do is get outside the DOD. It's really about science and enhancing medicine. And this campus has brought together a lot of entities that can work together to get after common problems that we all have. To the colleagues and staff at MRDC and DHA, uh, this has been an absolute privilege to work here. It's been too short, uh, but I really appreciate the opportunity to work alongside experts and professionals. Visiting the labs was actually the best part of the job, without a doubt. Going out and seeing people's faces light up as I started asking them questions. They're like, So you know what I'm talking about, which I didn't. My head, but I could get a good leading question in, uh, and it was just a lot of fun to see how much pleasure I had in talking about what they do because it matters, and they need to. Know. I want to, you know, point out that the complexity of MRDC is what really enriches it. We have so many different functions here, but they all come together to drive that science. It makes it hard. Um, But it also really helps us move from to putting something in the hands of the war fighter, right? And that's amazing. You heard General Coffin mention a couple of those products, and I'll mention a few. But you know, there are very few institutions that still are able to start with an idea, and move it all the way to actually putting something in the hands of the war fighter, which then for people get commercialized and uh, put out as a product and many other things. It's phenomenal what we get out there. So this last year, it was great to visit the labs. Um, and I do want to just hit a couple uh, breakthroughs. I'll try not to be redundant of uh, things that you spoke about. But we also uh, had the 10 milligram naloxone auto injector, which is a medical countermeasure against operational exposure to fentanyl. Uh, 
Um, but you all know that you know naloxone is, is a big deal now in the United States with the fentanyl problem, or excuse me, really with a narcotic problem, but fentanyl being the number one drug. And Appalachia, our neighbor, is probably hardest hit with that. Um, but it's also something that can be weaponized. So we have you know, developed this auto injector that soldiers can carry and immediately how treat themselves. Uh, so phenomenal breakthrough. MRC, as General Kaufman said, also developed the traumatic brain injury blood test. Um, you know, we used to wait weeks, months, years trying to figure out if someone really had TBI and how can you really tell that. We now have a point of care test that we might be able to push all the way down to the level of the medic, take a few drops of blood, similar to the test that you see people use to test their blood sugar for diabetes. And we may be able to just put that down there and say, yep, you need to be evacuated. You probably have a head injury or nope, at least not by my test. Maybe you just have a headache and we'll test you again tomorrow. Uh, but what a phenomenal tool, right? Because we are really, really concerned about traumatic brain injury, whether that's mild or severe. Um, and we had a tough time diagnosing it for a long while. You get hit by IEDs. I had an engineer uh, battalion with me at one point, and you know, kids would come back, and we'd do a sports medicine physical on them and say, you're good to go, get back in the game. Uh, and it's probably not the right thing to do, but we had no science really to back up what we, what we should be doing. Now we have point of care tool, which is amazing. Um, and then three months ago, Months ago, we gained FDA approval for the appraised tool. So it uses existing technology that we already have, but then an AI algorithm is able to um, assess that data, put it together, and determine if someone is at risk of hemorrhage. So we can very rapidly determine who's going to need blood and who's not. When you think about the capacity issue with blood and trying to get that to the battlefield and how much we might need, if we have a tool that we can very rapidly discern who's going to need it and who's not, that will help decrease both the cube and weight that we're going to have to put on ships and aircraft to get it full. Uh, so just a phenomenal tool. And again, bedside. It's a bedside tool that we can push all the way forward to a World one even if need be. Right. So at the end of the day, what we're about is preventing death on the battlefield. Um, and whether that's preventing hemorrhage or preventing infectious disease, um, all the things that MRDC does are really aimed at protecting the warfighter. And as again, Shimon Coffin said, we're trying to get left of that bank. Right? We want to be left of boom prevent things from happening. If they happen, though, we want to get right of it. Need medical care? We get you. <laughs> but we also, you know, work on getting right of it, but it really is, we want to be left. Right? We want to be left of the event and prevent things from happening. So with results like this, you know, and this is just in the time that I've been here, I'm confident MRDC's transition to the Defense Health Agency will be a benefit to all the services, right? We've always done things for the Army and it's worked for the Joint Force, but now we're working directly with Joint Force requirements, and that's important. Um, so we'll be aligned with DHAs and MRDC's cutting edge to, you know, really develop solutions that are going to benefit the Joint Force and the nation at large. The transition is still a work in progress, uh, but we've made great strides, and I want to offer a huge thank you to Lieutenant General Crossland for guiding us through the transition. Couldn't have done it without her. I also want to recognize our lab commanders, uh, and in no particular order, uh, Colonel Aaron Pitney, who's commanding uh, the Research Institute of Infectious Disease here on Fort Detrick. Uh, phenomenal job. That is the one lab that, when something goes wrong, Congress calls. Uh, so thank you for keeping a lid on that lab during my time here. Uh, Colonel Eli Lozano, on the other end of the spectrum, that's the lab that causes my issues, but it's okay. Uh, did a phenomenal job with Rare, and I really appreciate it. Uh, Colonel Paul Kassenbaum uh, over at Aberdeen with the Institute of Chemical Defense. Thank you, Paul. Great. You did a great job with that laboratory. Matt Hofer, Usuril, gets to stay in the Army uh, with the U.S. Army Air Medical Research Lab down at Fort Nobosil. The best name for an Army installation now since he's a pilot and a Medal of Honor winner. It's just perfect. Um, but Matt, great job at Nobosil. Thank you. Colonel Andy News, who runs USOM, that a lot of people don't know, but you know, putting product out to a warfighter takes more than just inventing it. you got to get it with through what's called the Valley of Death in the, in the civilian sector. And Andy News is the medical material development activity that really makes that happen. So Andy, thanks for all that you do as you work with uh, PEOs and DHA and others to get product out there. And then uh, Jeremy Pamplin, commander of TATRIC, the Telemedicine Technology Research Center, also on Fort Detrick. Thank you for all you did this year. Sharon Roster, who just took command and just walked out. Must have known I was going to say her name. Um, and then Mike Cohen, who was up there at Eucerium. And Eucerium is probably the command that's on the speed dial for the SMA, right? Because they're always talking about how we improve warfighter performance. Anytime anyone wants to talk about body fat or altering a PT test, Eucerium is in the conversation. Uh, so very important for the Army. And then our newest commander, Colonel Alyssa O'Hearn, took over the Institute of Surgical Research. I want to thank her 
And then also uh, Brian Lanier who transitioned. ISR, if you don't know, also has the burn center and the burn team. And you know, during my tenure here, they did the longest combination burn and ECMO uh, medevac that has ever been done in the military. They pulled a Marine out of Australia and flew him all the way back to Bamsey, where he is still doing okay. So phenomenal effort by that team. Uh, Major Stewart, Captain Trucking Miller, and Christina, thank you all. Uh, that's the personal staff. He kept me on time, kept me on target. Uh, you did an amazing amount of work behind the scenes, and I really thank you for that. So, Sergeant Major Brunel, I said a lot about you last night. Best Sergeant Major I've ever worked with. Just phenomenal performance. Uh, congratulations to you and the family. Uh, I think you're more excited about going back to Germany than they are, but that's okay. Uh, and I know you were going to do a phenomenal job with the 68th Theater Medical Command. Right? That is just going to be a tremendous experience for you. General Lodi. Uh, like the third or fourth change of command ceremony we've been in together in one way or another. Um, this one's gone a lot better than that I will talk about. Um, I know the organization is going to do well in your direction. Um, it is time to really have your professionalism, right? We've made it through the transition. There's still a lot of work. Um, the organization is really going to benefit from your drive and your leadership to kind of close the deal and get the full operational capability uh, as you remain Army Futures Command and also executing on behalf of the Defense Health Agency. Uh, so thank you for being here. You got a fantastic workforce, whether it's civilian, military, or contractor. You have people, you know, five states, four countries, and you're going to find out you have like one guy in Uganda. You what? What's that guy do? Right? You're everywhere, and it is truly amazing. Uh, and you will have a lot of fun. I know you've been to Aframs. Uh, you're going to get to Republic of Georgia. You're going to, be able to go to Kenya. Uh, you see some amazing things that this command does. Um, and you'll find out what an impact they have in the world. As you talk to ambassadors and folks in these countries, they really value the work that you do. Uh, I think one of your challenges would be how do we communicate that up the chain of command that this is valued in the U.S. government, but super cool stuff. Um, and then for the community of Frederick, it's a very cool community. I'm actually living right in the middle of town right now. I know more about it than I did uh, a few months ago. But uh, it's a welcoming, it's a supportive community. You have great relations with all the uh, various entities, whether that's the city or the county, uh, and even the state when we need it. Uh, so I think you'll, you'll find a great place to live. And I trust that you and Henry will quickly discover the charm, but uh, enjoy it while you're here. Uh, to the whole team, I just want to thank you for your patience and perseverance this last year. It was a lot of hard work. Um, I know you're going to continue to do great work, and uh, I just really wish you all the best as you continue forward as part of Army Futures Command and part of the Defense Health Agency. Thank you very much for its future. Thank you, Brigadier General Bailey. Ladies and gentlemen, the former Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, Command Sergeant Major Kyle Brunel. <laughs> former. It kind of hits different when they say former, right? Um, General Kaufman, General Lizagari, General Lodi, General Ferris, I see. Um, General Bailey, uh, General Rainey, my partner in competitions, thank you, and both Sergeant Major Platoon. Uh, we couldn't, couldn't be successful without you. Thank you for being here. General Collard, I have to, uh, Chief Johnson, I, I, I saw she was on the invite list, but I don't think she made it. Um, but thank you very much, Joey, for being here as well. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. Rosarius, I, I haven't had a chance to see it. I was hiding behind a curtain, uh, curtain but uh, thank you for being here. Um, and, and I can't leave out Sergeant Major Huff, if you didn't recognize him with his, uh, with his new facial hair. Um, thank you for making the trip to... Uh, to, to see us off and to see General Lodi and, and Sergeant Major Dills begin. Uh, it means the world to me. Family, friends of Medical Research and Development Command, thank you. Um, Sergeant Petchev, one last time, right? I, I, I've had the pleasure of, of being able to see her sing the national anthem probably 20, 30, 40 times, I don't know. But I've also had the pleasure of uh, of her being my uh, enlisted assistant and taking care of me 
over the last year. You know, I've been fortunate in the past two years to have two amazing enlisted assistants. There you are in the back row. See, I knew you'd hide in the back row, but I'm gonna call you out, Sergeant Kaddish. Thank you very much for being here and taking care of me, being at the right place, the right time, in the right uniform. That is no easy task if you know a little bit about me. And thanks for, uh, thanks for just being amazing Despite my loud talking, I turned my hearing aids down. These are amazing. You're right about the bionic hearing. Uh, they're amazing. I would have lost my hearing years ago if I knew how good these were. Um, <laughs> and, and, and singing and, and the bad dad jokes. Uh, so that's over. Um, Daryl Kaufman, thank you um, for officiating today's ceremony. I, I, have to, I can't let this opportunity go by without mentioning the influence you had on me over a decade ago. Um, I didn't know you then. But uh, I first heard of you in 2014 through your Ready First podcast. And I was a young um, battalion SAR major. I believe you were with 1st Armored Division at the time. And, uh, and, and I was struggling with this, with this new position. And, and Mission Command was a relatively new concept. And, and so I, I do a search and, and your face popped up. And, uh, and, and you equated basically all of Mission Command and all of this really tough concept into trust. And I and and you know light went off. I'm like, duh, right? And and so thank you for that. Uh, I didn't know you then, but it it really impacted me. And I tell you, when you trust your leaders, just give it to them, right? That's what you said. Just give it to them right away. That you don't have to earn it. You you got to keep it, but give it to them and watch them go, right? Wind them up and watch them go. And it, it's it's been a pleasure. So it's a, it's really the secret sauce. So thank you for that. Um, and speaking of trust, I know we didn't make it today. Uh, General McQueen, um, he couldn't be here, but he, but he, he trusted me with this position, and I, and I can't thank him enough. Uh, I learned a lot from him, and so I thank him for giving me this opportunity. Medical Research and Development Command is truly a unique assignment in many ways. The mission, the structure, the funding, the manning are all unique in Army medicine. Um, ex and except for ISR's world-class burn center, it is world-class. Um, we don't deliver health care like an MTF. We don't deploy as an organization like a medical brigade. But we do save lives on the battlefield every day, delivering the Army of 2030 and designing the Army of 2040. I call MRDC Army Medicine's home for the low-density MOS for enlisted folks. I'm filled with 68 kilos, 68 tangos, x-rays, Romeos. And me being a low density myself, you know, it, 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 it hit home. Um, I felt at home here because of that. But one thing that doesn't change regardless of mission is the responsibility to ensure that the soldiers are ready to fight and win on today's modern battlefield. And so who says you can't send a lab tech, a pharmacy tech, a logistics tech, an animal care specialist or an LPN to the Army's best squad competition? And we did that twice, right? They didn't win, and, and, and inside I told them, I said, thank God. <laughs> right? I mean, it, you know, they're, they're great, and, and I would have been proud as all, all get out to have them win, but if they beat the Rangers and the Special Forces, um, yikes, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but, but thank you for, for, for doing what you did. You showed out, and you did well. You Sam Ridd. You Sam Ridd. I'm calling you out, sir, because you told me last time I didn't say it out loud. Uh, you know, you're Sam Ridd winning two best squad competitions in MRDC. Um, not to mention um, AFC soldier and NCO of the year last year was done by Usarium and Userol, respectively. Our best medics twice doing very, very well in the Army's competition. And then ICD. Soldier wins the Aberdeen Proving Ground Soldier of the Year. So what that means is regardless of your MOS, MRDC soldiers are soldiers first. And you continue to show that every day, all while successfully completing your research missions. So I thank each and every one of you, and, and, and lest I forget, including all of the, the numerous and wonderful contractors and DOD civilians who provide the support so we can
be ready to fight and win. Christina, Chief, I, know I saw your face somewhere. Captain Strucker Miller and Hunt, you're outstanding. And, I, and I'm truly going to miss you all. You made me want to come to work every day. And thanks for putting up for my, with my numerous shenanigans. Um, to my senior enlisted leaders of all the labs, just simply thank you. You know what's truly important and why we exist, right? There's one reason why we got stripes on, right? And that's to train and lead soldiers. That's it. I truly appreciate your leadership. General Bailey, thank you for being an outstanding battle buddy and friend. Your wisdom and approach to leadership are simply superb. And I have been honored to serve with you. As you prepare for, for retirement, I wish you and your family all the best as you navigate the civilian world. And if you need a partner to go to any Colorado Rockies, Nuggets, or Avalanche games, I am in. I will fly out there myself. Just don't ask me to go to the Broncos games, please, unless, unless they're playing the Dolphins. General Lodi, I wish you all the success in the world with this outstanding organization. The soldiers and civilians of MRDC deser deserve your continued exceptional leadership, and I know you'll do that. Sar Major Dills, Mike, I am so happy for you and your family. You were my number one choice, I can say that now. Um, and I know you're the right guy for this exceptional command. Um, as my garrison SAR major, I had the distinct pleasure of watching you lead every day. And Fort Dietrich is better because of you and Colonel Marsh's efforts. I wish you and Rebecca all the best as you begin this journey, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Ah, it's, that's always the hard part, right? To, to, so I hope I don't get emotional. So I got I got a fix for that, I think. To my wonderful family, Steffi and Katie, here we go again. Back to Germany for the sixth time. I heard the aww. There's no aww coming from me. Uh, thank you for continuing to support me through another move. I know that we're all super excited to go back home. I, you're probably right, sir. A little bit more excited for them. My wife is counting boxes and tickets and all this stuff right now. Um, but your support means the world to me. And I can't wait for our first real German breakfast again. The American Lidl just doesn't cut it. Ich liebe dich, mein Schatz, und ich freue mich auf unser neuen Abenteuer. I find if you say that in German, right, that uh, it's, it's, you don't get emotional because it's physically impossible to get sad when speaking German. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Team MRDC, for the adventure. You will remain a special place in my heart. Continue to forge the future because this will defend. Thank you. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major Brunel. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command and Fort Dietrich, Major General Paula C. Lodi. Nothing like being the fourth of five speakers. Uh, I'll make this quick. Good morning. Um, distinguished guests, family, friends of MRDC, General Kaufman, thank you for presiding over the ceremony today and for your gracious words. And to all who created an extremely smooth transition for me and Henry, thank you. Four duty days, uh, we were on a parade field in Palm Circle having another ceremony. Um, and you all have done a phenomenal job onboarding us and making it seamless, so thank you. Um, to the Fort Dietrich and Frederick communities, I appreciate the warm, warm, warm welcome. <laughs> this is really, this is not Hawaii, um, but thank you. Uh, General Bailey, Sergeant Major Brunel, thank you too as well. You've been gracious from the moment uh, I was slated to come here, and I wish both of you very best in your respective transition. Uh, it is an honor to begin this new assignment where I assume three very important roles. Uh, first and foremost, as the senior commander for Fort Detroit. Um, there is nothing more important than being entrusted with 
an installation where our people and our families live, work, and represent the Army as part of a community. As Commanding General of MRDC, our work as part of Army Futures Command is crucial, and I am grateful for the opportunity to leverage the Army's primary innovation and acquisition headquarters to ensure military medical equities are integrated and keep pace with both transformation and innovation. And as the Assistant Director for Research and Engineering under the Defense Health Agency, I am committed to ensuring the transition continues smoothly. And that the DHA transition achieves the intended synergy and collaboration that keeps medical R&D relevant to all the fighting forces. General Izagiri, thank you for your trust and confidence that allows me to continue to serve in important roles at an important time. Of all the bosses and stakeholders that I inherit today, I am grateful for you and Joe's purposeful presence and obvious support. It is representative of your commitment to synchronizing and integrating Army medicine effects across the Department of Defense. Sergeant Major Huff, you are the gold standard for what a non-commissioned officer should be. See what I did there? The gold standard. Um, thank you for being here. And Command Sergeant Major Dills, I have nothing but respect and admiration for the non-commissioned officer corps. The power of a high-performing command team, thanks to people like Command Sergeant Major Huff. Thank you for trusting and joining me on this adventure. Uh, to General Troy and Paula, you two are the model for when a boss becomes a mentor, becomes a friend, and becomes family. Thank you for being here. And then Maria, as we finally are in the East Coast together, uh, in the same time zone. Thank you for representing our family. I am always grateful for you and your support. Brian, your, your, your partnership with Henry, your partner in crime uh, means the world to me. And Maria, if you really could fix my health.mil account before you leave, I'd be really, really indebted to you. Like I said, Henry, a week ago, we were on Palm Circle at Fort Shafter, completing two years with the 18th Theater Medical Command. Sergeant so Major, you're going to have a great ride with the 68th. Is Tracy here? Tracy, you guys will have a great ride with the 68th out there. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to call. Um, but this today marks my sixth command in 15 years. And I don't underestimate your sacrifice, Henry, and what it takes to support me, particularly in command. And it is through your eyes that I most appreciate the senior commander role and the role of families in our community. It was March 1789, this is, I'll wrap up with this, um, March 1789 when Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to the president of Harvard thanking the university leaders for conferring a doctorate of law upon him. Jefferson's sentiment then, much as mine today taking command of this wonderful, wonderful organization, he, note, he noted how little he thought he merited such a distinction. And that to receive that honor from such an eminent seat of science was precious to him. That is how I feel today. And what he said was that liberty is the great parent of science and virtue. And a nation will be great in both, always in proportion as it is free. So to the men and women of the Medical Research and Development Command, Fort Dietrich, and our joint and interagency partners, thank you for dedicating your expertise and focus to protect, project, and sustain our forces, as well as a future that preserves both liberty and freedom. It's an honor to take over today and serve all of you. Forge the future. Thank you, Major General Lodi. Ladies and gentlemen, the Command Sergeant Major of the United States Army Medical Research and Development Command, Command Sergeant Major Michael Dill.
So before I say a couple of words, I would just, if you'll humble me or humor me, I would like everybody to stand and say thank you to General Bailey and Command Sergeant Major Brunel for the job. Thank you all. Please see. So just before coming in today, uh, General Lodi scared the bejeebas out of me by saying that I should never leave my speech at the podium because it can't be removed and it happened to her. Ma'am, I'm good. So uh, many of you don't know, but uh, as you know, research specialists, uh, we like doing tests, right? So unwittingly, you've all been part of a test. Uh, not so long ago, I reached out to the uh, range control specialists and had them crank the heat. Um, and so at the conclusion of today's ceremony, if you don't mind, after you get your cake, there's a small survey about what it feels like to live in someone's mouth. Uh, just finish that up when you when you get outside. Appreciate it. We need that information. It's truly important. So all distinguished visitors, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's, it's truly a special day and a huge honor, as those that have uh, been on the dais uh, before have said. Uh, soldiers, civilians, families, and friends of the MRDC, Good morning, and I'm glad I'm saying good morning and not afternoon since uh, we've been at this for a minute. My name is Dills, and I am an MRDC soldier, proudly serving alongside the most dedicated, resilient, and capable soldiers, civilians, and contractors in the world. I have watched this unit achieve and succeed for the last two years as the Fort Detroit Garrison CSM, as others have said. And today I consider myself truly blessed to be counted in your number. Major General Lodi, ma'am. Thank you so much for the trust and the confidence that you've invested in me to serve as your teammate and as your advisor, and for the opportunity to help you guide this fantastic organization. Your calm yet steady leadership is already inspiring to those around you, and we are excited to see where you'll lead us in the future. More importantly, I'm excited for Henry DeSherry's bourbon collection. General Bailey and Sergeant Major Brunel, as I said, thank you so much for your stalwart leadership and for shepherding the MRDC through so much change and adversity. You've both left an indelible mark on the lives of those that you've led. Good luck to you both, and never forget that help is just a phone call away if you need it. To all of those who call the MRDC home, soldiers, civilians, and leaders, I'm excited to pick up the torch from Command Sergeant Major Brunel and continue this mission with you. I'm excited for the challenge and honor in helping you towards the future. A special thanks goes out to Lieutenant General Jones, Command Sergeant Major Sprunger, Command Sergeant Major Copeland, Mr. Tyndall, Command Sergeant Major Love, Colonel Arroyo, and Colonel Ned Marsh. But I also want to say, Command Sergeant Major Retired Huff, uh, I'm a little angry for the, uh, the bar that you've set, but I'm going to try to achieve it. Okay, so thank you for that. At the pinnacle of my gratitude is to the team that silently works behind the scenes every day to inspire me to work harder to remind me to love deeper and to remind me of the trust that the United States of America parents place in leaders to lead and guide their sons and daughters, my wonderful family. Jace, Luke, Sharon, Rebecca, I love you. To my wife, Rebecca, I promise to do my best to repay you for your unyielding support throughout these years one day, but I think we both know that I'm gonna fail. Thank you for all that you've done and will continue to do. Thank you for being here towards the future. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major Dills. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and remain standing for the playing of the Army song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremony. Please remain in place until the official party and honored guests depart. Brigadier General Bailey and Command Sergeant Major Brunel will remain center stage in the auditorium to receive well-wishers. Major General Lodi and Command Sergeant Major Dills will greet guests in the atrium. Thank you for attending today's ceremony.